Hi everybody, welcome back to the spring edition of Advanced Chemistry in the News. Protons have been known to exist for around a century, but physicists have just recently figured out where the proton's mass comes from. The discovery of proton is widely attributed to Ernest Rutherford, the father of nuclear physics. He first discovered the nucleus through his famous gold foil experiment, and later on deduced the existence of positively charged particles called protons. In 1968, experiments in the Stanford Linear Accelerator Center discovered that protons and neutrons are made up of smaller particles called quarks. Basically, a proton is made up of at least three quarks, two up quarks, and one down quarks. The wavy-like string between the quarks represent the gluon, a massless subatomic particle that is responsible to bind or glue, like its name suggests, the quarks together to form and stabilize the structure of the proton. Gluon generates strong nuclear force, which works in a strange way. When the quarks get closer, the force weakens, and when the quarks get far apart, the force becomes stronger, pulling the quarks together like a rubber band. Quarks gain their mass from Higgs boson, an elementary particle in the Higgs field that I have had a hard time understanding, which looks like the funky image shown above. The Higgs field and boson was theorized in 1964 and confirmed in 2012. The mass of the quarks only account up to 9% of the proton's mass. Protons are made of quarks, so where else can they gain their mass from? This perplexed physicists for years until recent research in November 2018, conducted by scientists from the University of Kentucky Lexington, Michigan State University, and the Chinese Academy of Sciences. The physicists found out that 32% of the proton mass comes from the enormous kinetic energy of quarks produced while moving around at more than 180,000 miles per hour, nearly the speed of light inside the proton. Meanwhile, 36% comes from the binding energy produced from the strong nuclear force that gluon fields connect the quarks together. This energy has to be large enough to work with the zipping quarks moving at nearly the speed of light. Energy is the key. It's all come down to Einstein's famous equation E equals mc square. Interpreted by this formula, mass energy equivalent states that anything having energy has an equivalent amount of mass, and vice versa. I find this very fascinating because I thought that gravity is just a gigantic mass attracting smaller mass. The reality is, the gigantic energy of the Earth is attracting the energy inside the atoms that make up us and every other physical things. The remaining 23% of the proton mass is the result of quantum effects that occur when quarks and gluons interact in complicated ways inside the proton. This can be explained by special relativity, again thanks to Einstein. This research relied on a technique called lattice quantum chromodynamics, which break up space and time within the quarks into grid to perform calculation using quantum supercomputers. Scientists also previously used this technique to calculate the proton's mass in 2008. There are still many unknowns behind the interactions between quarks and gluons. Current studies into the quark-gluon plasma state are expected to help physicists to learn more. Nonetheless, new discovery about where the proton mass comes from is a huge feat. Not sure how this discovery will be applied, but studying atomic structures contributed to different fields like quantum mechanics or astrophys astrophysics. Just a fun thought, but what if in the future, we can lose weight by lowering the energy produced by quarks and gluons in our body instead of having a diet. In short, proton is made up of three quarks, two up quarks and one down quarks, which are glued together by gluons. The total mass of the quarks only contribute a very small amount towards the overall mass of the proton. Most of the proton mass comes from the kinetic energy of high-speed quarks the binding energy of gluons that connects quarks, and the quantum effects that occur when gluons and quarks interact with each other in the proton. That's it for today. Thank you for listening, and have a great day.